Okay, and hello and welcome. My name is Martin, and today what we're going to be doing is attaching both the flamethrower and the ice thrower uh, particle systems that we created in the previous tutorials onto the first person character's gun. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first person player, we're going to need to go to the BP, we're going to have to go to blueprints and open up the first person character. Um, from here I'm going to close down a lot of these functions. We don't need them right now. And I'm going to leave the viewport and the event graph. Okay. So, um, and you know, honestly, before we get this whole ball rolling, there, there's, there's one thing that we really, really need to do. So let's go over to uh, settings and let's go ahead and make the center button, which is usually the scroll button. You can usually push down on the scroll button. So uh, we're going to make that and we're going to make the, uh, the right button available as things that we can click on. So go to world settings and let's go to inputs. And inside of inputs, uh, you can see that we already have a few uh, bindings that we have here. Uh, let's see, we have the uh, pause and the, and the interact, uh, which is what we use to open up the doors. So let's actually create one, two more. And the first one, we're going to call this second weapon. So second weapon mouse. And, you know, we don't even really need the mouse. Let's just make it sound cooler, like second weapon. And let's go to the bottom one, and let's call this one third weapon. Okay. Now, once we've got that, we need to make second weapon. Let's go to the mouse, and let's go till we see uh, middle mouse button. Okay, so second weapon is going to be middle mouse button, and the third weapon is going to be mouse, and it's going to be right mouse button. Okay, so there we go. So now we have the two other buttons that we're going to be using to, uh, in this system. So once you've got those created, you can go ahead and close here. And now let's go back and open up our first person character. Um, so the first thing that we really need to do with this is uh, we need to create the, uh, the system for the particles to actually be generated inside, uh, inside a first person character. And we already have a piece of code that sort of does that already. It's, uh, it's the one that is creating and generating your particles, uh, your, the balls when you shoot them, right? So your, your ammunition, your projectiles. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this whole thing and I'm going to grab the code that's inside, so I'm going to actually scroll in and make sure that the code is selected and that all the pieces are there, and I'm going to hit Control-C, and I'm going to right-click in the area above it and Control-V. Okay, so Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rename this because it's not going to be the, part, uh, the spawn projectile. It's actually going to be the spawn, or we can call this one flamethrower. Okay, so once it's called flamethrower, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this guy down because we're going to start breaking this apart into its little pieces so we don't have to rebuild a whole bunch of new stuff. Um, okay, but let me move this thing out of the way so we can see more space. All right, so the first thing that's happening is that right now this thing is being generated by hitting the left, uh, the left mouse key. So if we see that, that's the input action, and if we go back to settings, uh, project settings, we would see that the input action is set up to the left key. So we're going to go ahead and delete that as we do not need it. Uh, from there, the other part would be this information right here. So let me do a better job of grabbing that. So this right here is actually getting the information of where it's going to create the uh the the actual emitter like where is the emitter attached to like how is it um uh where is it's getting its location from right so we are going to i'm going to move this down a little bit and of course i need to make this box bigger Okay, and then I'm going to select this and I'm going to hit the letter C on my keyboard to add a comments and I'm going to say get location of 
sphere at end of gun. Okay, so now we know what that piece of the code is doing, right? Let's move this guy out of the way. All right, from there we have this piece, uh, this little nice square that's right here. So these guys. So basically what this part of the code is doing is it's basically saying uh, every time you shoot, the first time you shoot, create the kickback feel um, to it. So the weapons fire back, uh, kickback animation. So let's go ahead with that selected. And uh, actually I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. So Okay. So we are taking up less space. Also be careful, there's this little node that's hanging out on the back side. Uh, so make sure that all of that gets control C, and we're going to call this weapon fire kick back animation. Okay. Again, we're just going to accommodate the space a little bit. And we'll put this guy here. And that guy down there. Okay. Now, the VR stuff, uh, you know, honestly, I'm not using this at all. So I actually delete this and I go ahead and I delete the transfer box because we're going to be doing something different. Okay. So at this point, we now have the animation weapons kickback and we have where the sphere is actually coming from. All right. Uh, so from here what we need to do is, uh, obviously we're not spawning a first person projectile, so we need to go ahead and delete this, but we need to replace it with what we are spawning, which is the emitter. So remember that in the uh, other exercises, each one of those things that was producing the particle systems were called emitters. So we're going to say spawn emitter at attached, because we want it to actually happen in a specific location. All right, uh, with that node there, we're gonna go ahead and connect the, uh, the montage play or the kickback play to the emitter. So every time that that thing plays, the emitter starts. So this will be the next thing that it does. Um, from here, we can go ahead and attach our uh, return value. And actually, um, that is something that I deleted. Yes, yeah, so this right here, we don't need anymore. So we're actually going to delete that. And that makes this piece a little bit smaller. And uh, since we have a location here, we're going to attach location to where the ball is so I can find the ball every time. And the other thing I also did was put world rotation into this as well. Okay. So we got rid of uh, a node that was there and we attached the rotation to rotation and added the spawn uh, location to here. The next thing that we want to do is in our components panel, grab a instance of the sphere, drag it over, and this is going to be attached to the component. So this is how, uh, this is where it's going to know how to uh, find it, find the ball. All right. The other thing that I've also done to this is that I've scaled down a little bit the flamethrower or the uh, the flamethrower itself so that it's not so crazy. So we're going to make this a five by five by five. So let me just get in there and 0. 0.5 by 0. 0.5 by 0. 0.5. Okay. So now we have that. Now from here, the next thing that it should be doing is uh, it should be going to uh, to find out what level we are in. So then that way it doesn't actually generate this particular sprite. Oh, and before we move off, let's change the emitter to our, uh, what did we call it? It was our ice particle system. So there's our ice thrower and there's our flame thrower. Uh, because it's seeing all the particle systems that are attached to the project that we're in. So let's grab ice thrower. Oh, I'm sorry, flamethrower, since that's the one that we're doing first. So we'll attach that to the flamethrower. And then from there, let's clean this up a little bit so it's not as crazy. And I'm actually going to leave a space here because there's an additional node that we're going to put in. I just want to clean up the code uh, initially. 
so then that way we can actually just see the flamethrower work. space in there in a second. I just want to put this all as one deal right there. Okay. Now the other thing that I also did with this is that um, the firing sound, the sound that's in there right now is actually for the, uh, for the, it sounds like a shooting gun as opposed to what a fire or a flame torch might, might sound like, like a flamethrower might sound like. So let's come in here and let's change this to fire. And you'll actually see a couple of them in there. And the one that I believe I'm using is the Sparks 01. And so if we went back and actually listened to that, let's say, uh, let's, okay, we have to type in the word fire again. All right, so let's play that. And that sounds like a flamethrower, much better than the sound that was playing before. Uh, let's see if there's a way we can get that to stop. There we go. Okay. So now we have the sound and uh, okay. So at this point, what we've done is we have cleaned up all the code that was already there, right? We've organized uh, this section up here, which is uh, the animation kickback. We have uh, changed or, or organized the location of where it's gathering, where the ball is at, at all times. Uh, from here, we've added now, the only thing that we have added is the emitter, which was changing, essentially, the spawn, uh, the spawn uh, first-person projectile into this. And then from there, we've, uh, we've made the sound and added a new sound that sounds more like the, what we should have. Um, God, I hope I'm recording this. Oh, good, I am still recording this. Let's move that over there. Okay. So, at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and uh, create the firing situations for the pins. So then that way, uh, now that we actually have a uh, something that uh, we can generate the, the effect with. So, in order to do that, we're going to come to the front of the code. And remember up here, there was an event trigger. Uh, which uh, which was basically uh, an input action. So let's do the same thing and let's look up uh, second, since we called it second weapon, right? So we're going to go ahead and grab that. And this was the interaction key that we created earlier. So when this happens, and also realize there's like a little node that's hanging out right there, so then that way we get a combination of these. So we're going to attach it to there. So we do have second action attached to the same node that the input action is attached to. So then that way when we place, when we push down on the second mouse button, we are going to uh, initiate the event, which is the montage play. And, uh, okay. And then from there, the other thing that we need this to do is, uh, we need to get this to stop playing. Otherwise, the flamethrower will just keep throwing out flame. It, you, you don't have a way to turn it off. So uh, what we need to do uh, to get this to work is we're going to drag out and we're going to right click and we're going to type in uh, deactivate. Okay. Deactivate. And you know what? We're not going to do it from there. We're going to do it from here. So we are going to, from the return value of the spawn emitter, let's go ahead and drop that down right here. And let's type in deactivate as a function. That's what we're looking for. And I'm going to stick it way down here because eventually there's going to be additional information that we're going to do with this deactivate. So for right now, let's just grab the release, put that to the deactivate, and essentially, eh, you know what, let's just stick it down here. Okay, 
So we know that it is part of the emitter, that this is what's actually causing the thing to stop. And the other thing that we also have now is that not only do we want to stop the emitter from playing, but we also need to stop the sound from playing, right? So uh, in order to do that, we're actually going to have to take the sound and turn it into a variable. So let's come off of the, um, and we can't actually do that with the play sound at location that we have right now. So we're going to have to replace this. So let's right click and type in spawn sound 2D and that's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and expand this. So I hit the little arrow that was down there to open up the whole thing. And let's grab this one and delete it and move this one down. Okay, so we're replacing the other sound, the play sound, with the 2D spawn or the spawn sound that location. So we do want this, if the conditions are true, to make the sound. Uh, from there, uh, let's see, since it's spawning it at the location of the sprite, we don't actually need to get the actor's location, so we can delete that. And now that we have this node, we can come off of the return value, and let's promote this to a variable. And let's go ahead and rename this, and you'll see that it's now an audio component, which is really cool. So let's uh, rename this Flame... Let's say flame thrower sound. Okay, so once it's there, we can recall that function. And we can say that we want to create what's called a fade out. So I'm going to go back to where the deactivate was. And just in front of it, I'm going to right click and type in fade out. Okay, and if you're not finding it, make sure to take content sensitive off and you'll see it underneath audio. So audio components, components, audio, audio fade out. Okay, and uh, then we need to attach the release node to this first because we want the audio to fade out. Then we're going to attach this back to the deactivate. Zoom in. Okay. With the fade out and the target is going to be the sound uh no sorry we do need to attach that so now that we have this over here as a audio component you see there that is the uh, the one that we just created the variable we just created so we're going to click and drag that out and we're going to get an instance of it and we are going to attach this to the target so it knows which sound to fade out and then we're going to give it a duration of one second right so the fade out volume will fade all the way to zero and it will take it a second to do that. Uh, so that will coincide with the deactivate and that actually I came to a realization that that was actually a pretty good distance uh, for each one of those. So uh, now that we know what these are doing, let's put these in their own little box so we can keep track of what they are. So I'm going to select them, hit control C and I'm going to say fade sound and the act of eight, uh, deactivate, yep, flame emitter. All right, so at this point, we now should have a working flamethrower. If everything is correct, uh, connected correctly, let's just go back and check. It is attached to the second weapon or the, the second button. There's the kickback animation. We've attached that to the emitter. We're getting the location of the sphere at the end of the gun. We're attaching it to the sphere. We are uh, doing a sound fade and deactivate after uh, when the release of the button happens. And then from there, we're checking to see what level we're in so we don't have this playing uh, during... All right, that thing's in the way. Uh, playing during a menu screen and then we are generating a sound that's going to happen uh, close to where the sound is being emitted and uh, and we set that as a variable so then that way we can get rid of the sound later. So let's compile and save and let's go see if our flamethrower works. Alright, so I'm going to push play and 
Okay, so flamethrower at this moment is not working. So let's go back and see why. Um, we are hitting the middle button and let's figure out why this isn't working. Okay, so the one thing that we forgot to do is uh, let's go back into the first person character and uh, it has to do with the spawn emitter attached. Um, by default, this is going to be on keep relative offset or it may be on one of the other settings. What it needs to be on is keep world position. So then that way it knows exactly where the sphere is. And uh, since we're feeding it the information for that, it knows where to generate the actual fire. So with that, we should be able to hit compile and let's go check out our flamethrower. So we'll push play and I'm now hitting the middle C button and, or the middle mouse button, middle C, middle mouse button. And you can see that I'm now getting my flamethrower and uh, we should have uh, audio that's sounding off with this. I may have my sound card or something turned off. So. Uh, but guaranteed that the sound is also being generated with that. I'm, yeah, I'm not actually seeing anything come through my board. Okay, so it just must be um, some kind of routing thing on my end. But that the sound would be being generated and that it, it's there. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go double check. Oh, we don't actually have an asset. Jeez. Alright, that's probably why it's not going through my board. So let's type in fire... And let's go grab the spark sound. That's the one I want. So let's add that. Let's hit compile and save. I'm super sure I did that, but I've gone back to check to see what I was doing or why it wasn't working. There we go. And you notice that the sound fades away as soon as we stop. Not as soon as we stop, but kind of as the last of the fire is dissipating. All right. So, very cool. So we've got our flamethrower now attached. Let's go and do the same thing for our ice thrower. And since our ice thrower is essentially the same thing as our flamethrower, what I'm going to do is grab and make some space. Okay. We're going to grab all of the code that is here. And I'm going to try to grab the box too. So control C. Come down here, click at the bottom, control V. So it has a kind of an idea. Okay, let's go back in and make some changes. So, obviously this is not going to be the flamethrower anymore. This is going to be the ice thrower. Okay, the other obvious is that we need to attach this to a different button. So let's right click and type in third weapon. Remember that is the function that, or the setting that we created earlier for that key. Uh, at the moment we can't put the release because we don't have a deactive. Yeah, we do because we copied all that stuff. So we can just bring it right down there. Okay, so everything stays the same except for here. So here what we're going to do instead of flamethrower, it's going to be the ice thrower. Uh, make sure that this is uh, keeps world position and that we're doing the half size. Uh, the sound I didn't change. I left it as the spark because it kind of works for this. Uh, if we find a better sound, you know, you're always more than welcome to change it. And then at this point we should now have our ice thrower. So that was quite easy. So let's hit compile and save and let's check and see what happens. So let's push play. There's my ice thrower on my left mouse button. Or I'm sorry, on the right mouse button. Okay. And there's my flamethrower, ice, flame, right key, middle key, right key, middle key, and we still have our projector. Alright, fantastic. So that was relatively easy. That didn't involve uh, too much uh, bending over backwards and contorting ourselves into weird kind of positions to get that to work. So again, all we did was we went into the first person player, we found the projectile system that was already there, modified it, added an emitter, told the emitter where to emit, and then added a different sound that was spawning from the location, added two uh, keys to the, to the game. So a... Um, the middle key on your mouse and then the right uh, the right key on the mouse as well and so now we have 
everything firing. Okay? Fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.